Welcome back to the most professional StarCraft 2 with the current world champion, the Terran from Team Liquid in the Blue. It's Clem, but facing off against the Rocky Zerg out of Korea, it is Solar. A best of five Terran versus Zerg and the new New Balance patch with nerfs to the Queen, the Ghost, the Bunker, the Lurker, but very importantly buffs to YouTube comment interaction. And you can participate so easily by smashing that like button and maybe, maybe even subscribing. And Jimmy, what are we? What? 1,455 likes on this video, on this cast, and I'll cast another one. And I'll, I'll probably do it anyways. But thank you for watching. Hopefully you've had a good day so far. And hopefully it's about to get just a little bit better. Terran versus Zerg. The Ghost, three supply. Queens cost 25 more minerals. Ultra shoved their friends out of the way. But... Uh, their metabolism slowed down a little, so they don't move quite as fast with their speed upgrade. Some pretty significant changes at every stage of the game, but are we likely to see them, or is Clem going to outright kill Solar with Marine Tank pushes at the 8-minute mark? Was I not supposed to say that one out loud? I'm not sure, but we're starting things off on Amygdala, and no matter how you feel, this map is certainly a divisive one, and I mean literally as there are sets of rocks blocking the entire center of the map and the gold base is facing it. So the rush distance is actually remarkably long. But that doesn't mean the Reaper's not gonna get in the face of the Zerglings and start firing off whatever it can at it. The Queen comes out, going to politely yet firmly ask the Reaper to leave. Clem, wow. Could that, now that's just rude, sir. Oh, don't. Well, ah, yes. Will they, won't they? Another queen comes up. Shift change. And the creep tumor will be laid down. Clem, thinking about it, but Solar boxed out for long enough and these Zerglings are on the high ground in order to deal with the Reaper. So, Solar is able to get that third base up. Hatcheries are now 25 minerals less, but queens at 25 more. So, adds up pretty quickly over time to a slight nerf to the early game Zerg economy. And as I listed, the major nerf to uh, Terran, especially in the late game, obviously, is the Ghost. Now costs three supply, 50% more uh, in order to get those ghosts out on the field. We've already seen some games where, I think it was Beyond, literally shooting his own Marines in order to free up supply for ghosts, which seemed a little overdramatic to me, but uh, I digress. The Ultras, on the other hand, their push priority change, aka their ability to kind of shove their way to the front of the pack, is buffed, but with slightly less move speed, they do struggle uh, to close the distance quite as easily. So, it does feel kind of like a buff to Zergs facing off against, well, probably people who aren't clone. But we will have to see if we get that far, because my concern and I don't know if it's a justified one or not, but Clem's speciality is marine tank pushes. Just getting the damage done so early and keeping the pressure on so well that Zerg never really gets an opportunity to overrun the field. And Solar gonna try to turn that all around. Already a Nidus network is on the way. The Zerglings into the natural. Hellion's coming back to defend. This is just a straight up Zergling Queen Nidus. In fact, he's kind of throwing some of the Zerglings away. But the intent, well, the very edge of the base is dark right now. And a very dark-like strategy. Unfortunately, the command center lifts at the exact wrong moment. And the SCVs, the boys are pulled. What, you run out of Marines? Billy, you know the Marines are at the front. <clears throat> Meanwhile, though, the Queens, Weaver, ah! You did the transfuses and the Zerglings just right at the front door. Somebody left the door open. And now the Queens have invaded the base and the Imperial Empire of the, the Zerg is doing its best. But no roaches means the Queens are really the only damage dealers here. The Zerglings are working through the front wall. The Queens of the main, he's got some creep spread. A second Nidus is on the way. The Zerglings trickling through it. Some drones have arrived 
and a spine crawler rush from the main base. The spine crawler buffs didn't go through. Here comes Clem to deal with this head on. The Hellbabs trying to burn their way through the countryside. Unfortunately, it is on his side of the map. The creep thread will prevent this from landing. More is coming through. The queens are falling, though, incinerated under the concentrated fire of the Hellbats. And the boys will lead the charge. 25 of them will be slaughtered, but so will the vast majority of Solar's units. So, we now have to ask ourselves that eternal question. If you liked and subscribed, at what cost? Clem at 24 SCVs, Solar at 33 drones, but unfortunately with mules, uh, that means Clem, especially with three command centers, Clem likely going to be able to bounce back quickly. And Clem also still has his medevacs for the most part, he still has some hellbats and marines. So I'd say, <sighs> Solar, just a little bit short of enough damage there. He didn't quite land the critical damage he needed. He didn't knock out enough of the units to deny a third base. He didn't kill enough of the SCVs to completely shortchange the economy. And now he has an opportunity to get, well, obviously he already had a lair done in order to get the Nidus network. But losing several of the queens, he's back up to five. He lost five queens in that attack, 78 Zerglings. But the hard part here for Clem is knowing exactly what he needs to do in order to get back into it. So Solar has successfully sent the game into purgatory, where neither player is entirely sure of the position their opponent's in. It's no longer a known quantity like so many of this matchup have been in the past. So Clem has to be very cautious because another knight is all in with a fully committed Zerg, um, or he's trying to figure out whether Solar's been really greedy behind or if he's building another round of units. And Solar, bit of a mixed bag. He, got, he went up to 46 drones, but he's got another round of Zerglings on its way across. He's making 24 Banelings. And Baneling speed is on the way. Clem has an armory, obviously for those Hellbats. He's getting 111 upgrades, plus one infantry weapons and armor. The Banelings heading for the north side, but Clem, oh my God, he runs right into it. The Marines evaporated immediately, starting to split the Hellbats, but the Banelings are rolling into the natural, and the SCVs trapped in a prison of their own design. The Banelings looking for an opportunity. The Zerglings ransacking the economy, while the Banelings, an explosive meat shield here. And just rolling through, knocks out the vast majority of the Hellbats, and Solar is now up 25 supply on the world champion. Another Baneling connects. The Hellbats try to hold the line. He's dropping mules mid-fight. Trying to deal with this. And another 13 SCVs are dead. But Clem, only two down after all that. And he's got the upgrades finishing. Solar, Banelings, when they attack, very unfortunately, they die. So a lot of Baneling attacks uh, are not necessarily a wholehearted success. But another one coming in, those SCVs on the run, but a huge tank shot knocks out all but two of the Banelings. The Zerglings get into the main. And the tank, well, oh, that tank is so hot. 19 kills. That one Zergling, come on, get the tank. I'm not biased at all. Tank is taken down. And actually, Solar has broken through the defenses yet again, but another tank will take its place. And now Clem has the upgrades. He has a significant cost efficiency advantage. Already, siege tanks, marines, and medevacs are quite cost effective against Lings and Banes. But with these upgrades, Solar now back for another round of economy. He's done just barely not enough damage. He's come up just a little bit short. That first tank shot. Great target fire out of Clem which seems a little redundant to say, but it's worth pointing out. If he doesn't nail the Banelings with that first tank shot in the center mass, probably six or seven Banelings get into the mineral line and kill another dozen SCVs. So that one shot, that one opportunity, he certainly captured it. And now, well, the Queens on the edge of the creep. Solar is uh, fighting from a very uncomfortable... This is exactly 
what he was trying to avoid by being so aggressive. He was trying to avoid Clem getting out on the map with these medevacs. He, the only anti-air are the angry knitting needles of the queens, trying to create a very sad no-fly zone. But the medevacs don't respect it at all. And now with superior upgrades and mobility, Clem uh, has his pick of options here. He still has to be somewhat wary. Oh my god, nobody puts the tank in the corner. He's trying to get the Banelings so close that Clem can't target fire them. Keep your enemy close. And your, and your friends also close to the enemy, because otherwise they'll be hit by a siege tank, as the saying goes. I think Sun Tzu said that. Meanwhile, Banelings attempting to roll in solar, keeping the pressure on. But Clem has firmly retaken momentum. Three separate waves of attacks, all just breaking a little short of critical damage. And now... Clem, some target fire, knocks out another Baneling or two, can pick up as soon as they close in. And now he's taking the supply lead with just a outright better unit composition. He's adding in some Hellmats, some Widow Mines as well. Three more racks on the way. Two, two upgrades for Silver, who does have 74 drones now. Not an uncomfortable number, but he's just now on his fifth base. And you know what? Five bases is quite... It amounts to a slight economic lead now for Solar. He just needs to keep the production level up. That's the hard part, though. Several tanks on the field scattered throughout. Clem has re-established himself back at home. It's going to be almost impossible for Banelings to close in on their own. Meanwhile, a drop over to the right flank. Marines... Already hitting. Infantry armor level 2 done. Complementing infantry weapons level 2. The 2-2 two -two upgrades for Sower still so far off. Another drop to the left flank. Assassinates one queen. Knocks out another wave of tumors. As Clem jams himself. Wait, is that a... Unbuildable plates? What? I have no idea why they're there. That's a very odd... I wonder... I wonder why... That is a very odd spot to have unbuildable plates. Usually they're to prevent bunker rushes or stuff like that at the very bottom of the ramp. So, I'd love to know why there are unbuildable plates there. Okay, it doesn't even, like, block this area. It just builds a spore back there. So, maybe make it easier to... I, I'm not sure. That is confuzzling. But drilling clause is done. Solar is working up towards a hive. He does have those 2-2 upgrades on the way, but Clem just keeps applying the pressure. Another drop rotates around. This time, double drop and some mines behind. Guns down a couple hydras. Works on some more drones. Widow mine hit, slams into the Zerglings. Marines caught in the corner, but easily escape with the medevacs. And again, Pressy on the left flank. The double-double. Actually, there's four medevacs over here. Another queen down and no defenses as Solar scrambles across the midfield. Tries to recover. He's lost 10 drones, and he might lose another hatchery. Down it goes. Clem picks up, gets out, more mines. Hydras will clean up a tank, but the damage is done. GG. Clem takes game one. Solar so close to knocking down the world champion. But Clem holds on every front and pushes back. <sighs> Solar, honestly, the, the second attack, not the first one, but the second attack was the one that caught me off guard. Apparently, Solar, well, with that quick Bane speed off of the relatively quick clear because Night is all in, surprisingly effective, as Clem certainly not expecting 30 Banelings when he walked out his front door. But, um, well, fool me once, and I won't be fooled again. Clem manages to deflect everything else. If only he had those mainlings with the original Nidus, but of course that's another investment of gas. He didn't really have much of economy. The Queen's coming. He even threw the spines in at the end, but it seemed like more like a mm, I need something more than a, the original plan, unfortunately for Solar. As we go into Whispers of Gold. Game two. This is from Wardy's public test realm tournament. The shout out to Wardy as always for putting on all these amazing tournaments, dealing with pro gamers and their hectic schedules. I mean, uh, encouraging pro gamers. So just a little bit of a fourth wall break is the reason I don't love live tournaments uh, is because I like to focus. 
on the gameplay. And a lot of live tournaments is hurry up and wait for the players to show up on the right server with the right maps and the right observer interfaces and all that. Um, and why have downtime when you can have uptime? So hopefully you enjoy both versions. So make sure to check out Wardy if you get the opportunity. Link in the description. If Jimmy didn't screw it up. Apologies. Reaper had it across. And, uh, ooh, what's going on back there? This map has actually low gravity. I think it's our first map that has low but not non-existent gravity. Um, like how we've had underwater maps. I, I keep, it's one of those things I just get excited about. I think it looks cool. Not this again. Oh my god. Young man! That, he's teasing me! Sue said, you are like three times his age. Yeah, I'm quite a catch. Well, you're not catching him. Shut up! Shut up, Brenda! Shut up! I'm sorry. God, I'm just saying, since the war. That's enough. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm blacked out for... Overlord, going behind the... What the hell is going on back there? Wow, did that take a whole mining operation? If only the Terrans could use that. Don't give them ideas. Next patch, maybe. What? Queens? Kind of coagulating out there. We didn't see much of a late game, obviously, in the previous match. I don't blame Solar for trying to get the damage done. It was a bit unlucky that the exact placement and timing of the third command center lifting gave away the Nidus. If he had a few more seconds of surprise, that very well could have been that critical damage. Jumps over to the side. He spotted that this was a late gas in order to get that third base, and now he's going to try to kill some of the drones. Gets one. Incinerates a couple more Zerglings, but has this been worth it? Eh, the queens are chasing it down. Another grenade? Bounces one over to the side, but I think that one ended up helping out more. But wait, there's more for the Hellions. Um, just gonna run by that. This is just rude. Three drones dead. Eight more in production. Banshees with cloak on the way. I, I'm still very... Wow, look at the size of that. Compare it to the Overlord. Wow. So, since we essentially have to have the same map, with slight variations because of m reasons that we're not going to go too detailed into in SC2. Map makers have to show some creativity more in the uh, aesthetics and uh, just the, the vibes, really, of the map. And this is one of my new favorites. Just I, I really love the color scheme as well as the um, just the feel of it. It's like this st sort of steampunk, almost abandoned facility, you know. Do you know? I, I mean, do you know what you don't know? How can anyone know how much they don't know? I don't know. Mac! Clem taking us to McDonald's. The Overlord escapes from the clutches of the Super Grabber in the corner. And Banshee Cloak! is about to complete. Lair's not quite done yet. Retreating towards the spore crow. I'm gonna pick off another drone. Clem, going for mass cyclone speed banshee. So we get to see the new cy- I didn't even talk about this. The new old cyclone is back. All right. Then, well, you'll see it momentarily. Magfield accelerator has returned. No more debating what the Hellion speed upgrade is called. They're just fast on their own. The queen's gonna hold the line for now. Queen's boot is gathering. But this is the cyclone from about two years ago. Requires a tech lab, costs 150, 100, does a lot of damage, moves real fast, and has almost no HP. But of course, if you don't touch, if you can't touch it, then it doesn't matter how much HP it has. Hellion's just running all the way by, and enough of them getting into the mineral line to form an existential threat to the drones. Four of them dead. Still more banshees coming in. And Clem 
really starting to rack up the damage despite barely even revealing his actual unit composition. And even though an Overlord got in, that does... Did he wall in a Cyclone with his... Clam! <laughs> well, the Banshees are able to take this out. And Hyper She's... Oh my god. Oh my god. I hit the... Ah, it's going back down! I want a mod that keeps the uh, ragdolls and the particles for like five seconds longer. Um, as well, just to really enjoy the gruesome nature. This game is remarkably violent. Believe it or not, the game about intergalactic war is somewhat violent, I'm starting to think. And my mom thought Counter-Strike was bad. All right. No problem with genocide on a galactic scale though, that one's fine. Anyways. Like and subscribe. Meanwhile, the Hell Clones, without road speed, you can't touch it. All right, you just cannot get close. They have a, about a three second cooldown on those lock-ons. They do so much damage. So having just a few Zerglings in front is really important to help out. The speed, the Hyper Sheaths, I like Hyper Sheaths. Speed Banshees just doesn't roll. I like Hyper Sheaths, okay? Is there any reason we shouldn't use Hyper Sheaths as the name? I will not be stopped. Not by you, not by anyone. I will say Hyper G is or see the uh, galaxy burnt to ashes um, or something like that. I think I think that's the quote. Overlords dropping out some creep. Here come the, I assume the queens are gonna get involved. The Hyper G is really cutting into this. Fires off a volley of corrosive bile, but easily dodged. The queens need to be involved. Otherwise, Clem's going to have absolutely no problem dealing with this. There's only one Overseer. So, not that the Banshees having Cloak is really a relevant part of all this. Just finding it back and forth. Corrosive Bile barely connects. He's really chewing through the Zerg right now. The Hell Clones having a relatively easy time of it. The Blue Flame Hellions clearing out everything on the ground. And another wave of Corrosive Bile, but he splits, dodges back, and comes back in for more. The Queen's now targeted, most of them taken out by the Cyclones. Banshee's microing back. More Hell Clowns in production. And Solar is thinning out dramatically. It's not gonna be enough. Clem, of 30 supply, he's gonna take out a bunch of Overlords just to add insult to grievous injury. And again, Solar looked for a timing. And Clem, more than capable of dealing with it. Again, Solar, I, I think he's on to something. It's just Clem, his micro from start to finish is so ridiculously good that it, it just it just feels so difficult to actually find that damage against him. Like, Solar, this was a really solid time. If Corrosive Bile ever hit anything. But the Hell Clones, and Clem has 84 SCVs behind it. He's got a fourth command center. He did all this without upgrades. I mean, Solar doesn't have any... This is completely upgradeless. Both players relying on the strength of the units themselves. As uh, they kill each other so quickly. But I think the Hell Clone count has reached a critical mass. And Roach Ravager isn't getting any better with time. The mag field, you can see the little lasers, I guess, sticking out of their missile pods. Don't question it. You gotta put laser sights on your rocket pods. And, uh, that's not looking good for Solar. GG! It's gonna be 2-0 for Clem, going into match point. Another decisive victory. A tough time for the Queens, as they stumbled across a little bit late. But still, another very interesting game. I was wondering if we'd see any of this very uh, hyper-mobile, quite literally, um, Hell Clone style, which it relies on being always constantly on top of your units. You need to never, ever, ever slip. Because those units are so incredible. Banshees and Cyclones are almost too fast for their own good. But if there's any player in the world who can keep control of these units, well, there's a clear favorite. So Solar again, coming up short. And Clem, uh, up to a 
zero lead one game away from taking it home as we chrono boost through these early openers i've noticed zergs maybe well against protoss zergs are using the quicker hatchery to pretty much guarantee the ability to get a hatchery uh, by the time a probe scout can come across to potentially block but the general builds in zerg versus terran remain pretty much unchanged you get your hatch first, you get your queens behind, zergling speed usually pretty early on. Um, but the slight mineral change has a much more uh, significant effect on the zerg versus protoss matchup. Reaper on the way across. I'd love to see another variation on that, as the new old cyclone... Yes, it's gone through more identity crises than Phoenix in the campaign. The new well, I guess Kerrigan is also a good example, but... The new old Cyclone is a pretty close to the original version, as it the sniper unit. Um, it does cost almost as much as a siege tank, yeah. but it obviously has its use as a much more mobile unit. Eventually, if they get enough road Ravager, you want those tanks to back it up. But the Clone Wars... And I've also seen it in TVT. I'd have to cast some of the... Oh, my God. Can we just... Guys, this isn't a romantic comedy. This ain't a joke! I know. Ah, yes. Just like a romantic comedy, the man chases the woman and harasses her with deadly weapons until um, she eventually runs away or kills him. Um, starring Adam Sandler as every character. Starport on the way. Gonna be the 111, the Destiny Cloud Fist build, I've heard. I think Fever Dream. Medivac for Hellbat timing? Yes, that was like two or three question marks on the end of it, but... But through all the fire and the fury of Hellions and Hellbat throughout Legacy of the Void, I think the Hellbat... If there was a unit we could buff in the late game, it's the Hellbat. I propose... It's one of my more outlandish balance proposals is uh the blue flame upgrade instead gets changed to a range upgrade instead of a big damage upgrade for the hellbat maybe an armor upgrade as well i propose calling it concentrated fire because i like to think i'm clever like and subscribe but the hellbat has more of a tank and less of a uh freight train of fire i think would be a uh, well we'll see how well it does here I'm talking more late game than early four and a half minute push. Uh, but the queens. Oh, is it getting hot in here, Brenda? Yes. Yes, Susan. Yes, it is. The medevac microing back. The queens getting up close and personal with the hellbats. The spore crawler moving into position, but the hellbats getting so much extra damage. And more hellions coming in. The medevac, a queen pops out of the third, finally gets cleaned up. The hellbats like a horror movie villain slowly yet surely ambling towards the limited space that the queens can run to literally the ends of the earth more zerglings coming in not a great counter to hellbats but trying to turn them around so they're looking the wrong way to deal with the queens oh no a liberator and there's only two queens left one of them under fire in every sense of the word zergling oh my the liberator clears out the third base and solar only has 43 drones that number going to dip even further as the liberator siege is up pops another couple drones and <laughs> turns its guns there should be enough right okay all right finally gets taken down but i feel the damage is already done behind it clem adding on a third this was actually a two base timing so really focused on getting that damage done early now two bunkers back at home as Solar again, this time around, feeling 
no, uh, like he has no other choice but to do a massive counterattack. He has a bunch of roaches, he has zerglings, but he doesn't even have queens to inject. That means he can't get his economy. He, he thought he rebuilt them, but he, he can't really get his economy back on solid footing for a time. So his best chance... Oh my god. He moved... It's like that. It's like a car bot. I'm pretty sure this is the car bot. Where the corrosive bile, the liberator, has time to siege, unsiege three, four times before corrosive bile lands. And then it just curves around it. Go watch that now. Before you finish this game. It's worth it. I'll wait. The boys are getting a little bit out ahead of themselves, but... The Ravager count is high enough that it must be respected. He's not falling back. The bunkers and a whole bunch of zerglings. He's gonna go for the break. There's only two hell bats. One gets taken down immediately. A wave of corrosive bile. Micro's back. Tries to salvage at the last second. Ain't gonna happen. But most of the corrosive biles were used and now the liberators. The Venn diagram of freedom. Just melting through. Eight SCVs go down. Clem plummets to an 11 worker lead. And now the three Stimberines are chasing down the Ravagers. Nah. He saves both of them. Where are you going? Yeah, that's not gonna happen. So we're gonna try to macro it out, but I fear the damage was not enough. Another version of the same story. Where Solar, either of his own volition or by the necessity of the situation, will be forced into an almost all-in attack. And again, it does okay. But it just doesn't did it doesn't did enough. Y'all. <laughs> Clem now has one one done. He has he has stim. He's working on combat. He started two two. He has the worker lead. <laughs> um If he throws multiple medivacs into spore crawlers and queens without unloading. Then maybe Solar will have the breathing room to actually catch up here. Like three medivacs, not even just two, like three of them. Make no mistake. I know it's it's kind of against the caster code to be like, well, this is pretty over. But if there's one rule I live by, there are no rules, is, is, the, is the rule. Right now, Solar is... It's bad. It's really bad. Like, it's one of those where you have so much back at home, you can't just leave the game. But Solar knows exactly how bad it is. And... It would be a Major League Baseball Yankees final game level throw. Um, in order for Clem to lose from this position. Double, double. Hmm. Some more drones going down. Silver's so down 12 workers. And Clem clears it out. Solar finally finds permission uh, in order to tap it out. And Clem with a comfortable 3-0 without a single ghost uncloaking. And that brings us to our bonus game. Two players known for making uh, entertaining if slightly lower level games. Beyond versus Rex. Bion, obviously, the uh, uh, metaphorical father of of Clem and his style. The Micro-Terran before uh, Clem kind of took that title. And then Rex, who has regularly, uh, maybe not at the highest level, but he always comes up with completely, he's like a, he's like if Florencio was pro and played Zerg. Or he's like if Dark went on a bender for several years. That, that one's probably more accurate. He has a remarkable obsession, at least last I checked, with hydralisks. 
um, or just lists in general, is this updated one. Yes. Yes, these games are played on the new, new version of the public test round. So we've got all the updated strategies, such as they are. But I kind of expect Beyond, who is historically not really cared at all about you. He's kind of played the exact same way for the last 15 years. Adding in a few more Reapers until he gets them nerfed. But occasionally deciding that he's going Mass Reaper again anyway. So, um... I... Even though he has his kind of unique style, it is the same style. At this point, I can empathize. Being a similar age, um, at some point you've decided, what, I've talked about this a, a little before, but I can, I can play against players at the same level of like, okay, let, not pro, but near Grandmaster Ladder or Grandmaster Ladder, and I can remember Hey, this is the guy who uh, battle cruiser rushes or something like that. And like 90% and the last time I played him was three years ago. Um, but lo and behold, four and a half minutes, five minutes in the game, a battle cruiser jumps into my base about 90% of the time. <sighs> so what I'm trying to say is I fear change. And so do most people as time goes on. So. You've been liking and subscribing up until this point. Why stop now? Is the summary. Well, the, um, will they, won't they? The early Reaper flirting with the Queen will conclude momentarily as the speed upgrade completes for those Zerglings. Actually, will be on overstay as welcome? Or is he actually gonna... He's gonna pull back just at that moment. Join them with the first two Hellions. Looks like Banshees. And will there be Cloak on the way? He's got the double gas, so probably... It's gonna be a strong maybe. And... Thinking about running by, but he knows that Zergling speed is likely done, even though Rex hasn't shown any of... Wow, okay. It's just gonna be a rush towards Stim. Not bothering with the cloak, just uncloak Banshee. He's still good on defense, and if they see a Banshee... Ah, he's faking it. He saw the Overlord come in, but I'm pretty sure Rex saw him start the upgrade on the tech lab. So he was faking the cloak for just a split second, put the least possible effort into it. What is going on down there? Is this how they make the Thors? It's got its Thor tentacles there. Um, moving on. Double engineering bay. Beyond, going to be heading towards a whole bunch of marines. The spore crawlers are on the way. Brenda about. Wow, he got all three creep tumors. Beautiful oncology work. As the queens still working their way across. Lairs on the way as well. No evolution chambers for Rex, which, uh, no Roach Warren either. <gasps> Mutons? Oh, there's the evil chamber. <laughs> now, Mutas did not get a buff. Um, and in fact, I would argue with the new Thor, despite having significantly less range, has much better fighting capability. It has uh, more effective splash damage, so it pretty much negates the magic box ability of Mutas to kind of mitigate Thor Splash. Which, I'm not sure why we did that part, but um, if there's one unit, I would trade a buff to the Ultralisk and Hydra for a buff to the Muta. And you know what I would do with the Muta? I'm not even, like, I'm not talking about bounce. I love the Muta. I don't see it at all. It's easy to love something you don't see anymore, but uh, a range, like a hive tech range upgrade. Go from three to five range. So that way it could at least kind of work around things. It can outrange 
Widow, well, not outrange, but work against Widowmons and Marines and maybe even Phoenixes that don't have the range upgrade. But the problem is Muta's just, there's no window. There's nothing like, the Mutas cannot come out in time to do enough damage and force a strong enough response. Like, they're not a great fighting unit. They're like uh, flying tissue paper. The Marines just shred them. And because economies and Legacy of the Void, and one, players have gotten so good at developing them, and two, just you have more stuff at the same time Mutas could come out. Even if you have more Mutas, it doesn't do as much as uh, they would have, say, in Wings of Liberty. And that's just why you don't see them nowadays. Players are much better at dealing with multiple uh, prongs of harassment. Very efficient about picking up those Marines. Rex has amazing creep spread so far. Especially considering how active Beyond has been at denying it. Down goes one Banshee. No cloak to speak of. Tank. Kind of jammed into the corner. Beyond hasn't made a lot of effort. But he is up 14 supply. And he has 1-1 one, one done. So he's going to have the upgrade advantage. But we got this classical marine tank. It's going to be Hydra Ling Bane as well. And the medevac down with all hands. Beyond. A uh, pretty serious mistake there that gets a lot closer to evening things up. Carapace level 1 is done. If Rex was to pick a fight, now would be a good time. Before Beyond gets any further ahead in upgrades. And while he's fighting onto the creep, Rex has four hatcheries. He's got a macro hatch in the main as well. So technically five, but four bases. He is setting up for the surround. Another wave of Lings and Banes is looking to either cut off reinforcements or do a massive flank. And there's a very good chance he could crush this army. It really depends on the micro of the siege tanks. He's going to go for the counterattack. Beyond has to be aware. That the army's closing in from either side. There's only one medevac here, so he's not going to be able to evacuate much of this at all. Rex, now would be good. Another army on the left side. Baneling's rolling in from an awkward angle, but more queens coming up. Baneling's directly onto the Marines and beyond. Lambasted on the field. Crush, he's going to get a few queens. I'm not sure why he's abandoning the queens here. Rex, no! But overall, beyond is melted. Rex goes up to a 20 supply lead. Beyond just gets crushed. He had to feel the jaws of Zerg closing in, yet he did nothing to prevent it. And the Marine tank, not nearly enough, especially with just one medevac. No evacuation route. And again, Rex doing a great job of deflecting the drops and mitigating the army. Two twos on the way for both sides. Beyond will have the advantage there. The army supplies are still close to even, and Hive just began. So that means there's quite a window before Rex will have Vipers, he, before he can have Ultras, uh, Adrenalings, all those. But there's still a Banshee? The Widowmine ends up hitting more Terran than Zerg. Microing back some more. 2-2 about to complete. The Widowmine ends up getting taken out. Picks up. The uh, Hydra's going to pick off some more, and another 20 supply gap opened up. Beyond. Just... It's, it's sloppy. Like, uh, he has not been picking fights that he can reliably win. And even the fights that are kind of close, Rex is, is clearly overwhelming him before Beyond reacts to the uh, amount of units on the field. But this is an upgrade disadvantage for the Zerg. And he is off a of creep, so... Well, the splits are good. The Baneling's rolling in. But Beyond, with some textbook splits... Able to mitigate the damage. The Hydras are left on their own behind. Concussive Shells is now done. And he might be able to tag some of the Hydras on the way out. Rex thinking maybe he could break through. But Beyond's now on four base. And he really wants to capitalize on this exact scenario. Before Rex is able to get 2-2 done. Adrenal Glands is on the way. More Widowmonds. Lurker down about to complete. Hive is already done. Planetary Fortress is locked out at the, the 6 o'clock base. Rex, Drilling Claw's not done, but the Baneling's caught out. Changeling's gunned down. Easily taken out, and Rex... Well, oh, it's unclear who's flanking who, but with those Widow Mines, that could be problematic. The army gets crushed again. Picks up into the Metavex. Rex is chasing down. 
More little mines. Don't find much. Siege tank on the high ground helping out. The baneling count simply isn't high enough, though. As Beyond holds yet again. <laughs> what a hectic battle back and forth. Beyond keeps butting off more than he can chew, but Rex... Uh, keeping it palatable. Another double drop loaded up as Beyond picks up and heads actually the other direction, over towards the right side of the map. With three Vipers on the way, two Lurkers in production. Adrenal Glen's about to complete Lurker range as well. Ghost Academy just started. Three, three infantry weapons and armor for Beyond. Looking to match that Hive Tech level. And in fact, no Hive Tech upgrades for Rex. I mean, uh, the basic upgrades, obviously. Adrenal glands and all that. The Lurkers with slightly less HP. I'm not sure how that relates to getting overrun by the Terran army, but they certainly are. Every single Lurker. No match for the Marauders and the Marines and Rex. His biggest investment of the game just gets run down. And now a Viper as well. Oh, no. It's a disaster. The Zerg and now the Queens. The three most important parts of the Zerg army just got gutted. He lost the Lurkers, he lost some Queens, and he lost some Vipers. And beyond, he's going to be able to hit the right side base as well. Rex, he's been playing a solid game, but that wasn't even an overextension. It was just a dereliction of duty. He trusted the Lurkers to be able to fight the Bio army. That didn't have ghosts, didn't have liberators, but he severely overestimated their capabilities. And beyond, when faced with such a known quantity, is easily able to hit the scans, stim, split, and take them out. And now beyond's a 50 supply, just like that. Down goes a hatchery. And now ghosts on the way, target fired. Feels like beyond has his mojo right on back now. He's had a rough game so far, but that lurker take. That, I'm not even going to call it a snipe, because there were no snipes. Especially now that ghost got absolutely eviscerated. Wow. Knocked into the stratosphere. Another drop to the right. Main force to the left. He's going for the main parasitic bomb, but the medevacs will be able to unload. But uh, the ships will be burnt on the way out. There is no escape. They're going to get as much damage done as possible. And it's going to be terrible, terrible damage indeed. Widowmine connects. The Lurker's trying to close in. The drop again on the right flank and another attack down the center. Uh, the Ghosts really have a death wish. But the Lurker Den itself in the most exposed low, he loses the Lurker Den. Oh my god, the Ghost... No, Brenda! What if I watch? I'm pretty sure the Queen could win that fight. 3-3 ah. three, three is done. More snipes coming out. Queens getting taken down. Oh my, chaos, butchery, massacre, but Rex just losing a little bit too much across the board, lacking detection. He's lost 7,000 more resources. The Banelings, somewhat amusingly, the only unit that has seemed to be kind of useless for Beyond has been the Ghosts. He just keeps throwing them into the worst possible scenarios. But Widowmon's dotting the field. The Lurker's trying to move up. Rex going to try to drag Beyond. Uh, oh, wow. He doesn't even have adaptive talents because he lost the Lurker again. There's still a Widowmon in the main base. The Lurker's working on a planetary. But the planetary's winning the fight. And the Lurkers all get sniped out of the ground. JJ, Beyond holds on. Rex... Oh, overextending and undercommitting. Beyond made a lot of small mistakes, but Rex made a few big ones. And that decides the match. But we had, well, that went a lot further than any of the games Clem managed to take against Cyril. But the Terrans strike back. So, what do you think? Terran versus Zerg. Where are we at? I I'd love to see that Hell Clone, Hell She. Though I'm not sure if that's going to be a regular composition. Um, maybe make Mech Terran a thing again, which apparently is one of our goals with every patch for some reason. But I digress. Still, I think some fun games today, and I hope you enjoyed. I will make your day a little bit better. If you got the means and motivation, be awesome to check out Patreon or YouTube membership. But I hear liking and subscribing is still free, at least for now. 
And it'd be awesome if you could check out Wardy as well if you get the opportunity. Otherwise, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Good luck. Have fun. Stay chill.